Welcome to foodfeedinfo.com. This lecture is a part of BS Polity Science Scheme of Studies. The course is Metabolism of Primary Nutrients. So this is absorption of carbohydrate. This is part two of our previous lecture in which we discuss digestion of carbohydrates. So in this lecture we will discuss a uh, brief about absorption of carbohydrates in monogastic and particularly in poultry birds. So when we compare ruminant with the non-ruminant species, in case of uh, ruminant animals, carbohydrates, uh, they are mainly fermented in the rumen through microbial fermentation and there is a production of volatile fatty acid in the rumen. Those volatile fatty acids they are absorbed uh, through the ruminal wall and then uh, through blood circulation they carry to the liver or to the tissues where in, in case of non-ruminant animals uh, there are digestive enzymes uh, which are responsible for carbohydrate digestion and the end product of carbohydrate digestion is glucose and that glucose is produced in the small intestine mainly where it get absorbed uh, through the intestinal lumen and then uh, into the blood and then carried to the liver for further utilization so this is the major difference between ruminant and non-ruminant species the same is true for the poultry birds absorption of carbohydrates so carbohydrates are present in different forms like monosaccharide, disaccharides, tri, oligosaccharides, polysaccharides. But if we talk about monosaccharides absorption, uh, they, uh, these uh, type of carbohydrates or monosaccharide units, they do not need hydrolysis before absorption because they get absorbed as such. But if we look at the diet composition, majority of the carbohydrates, they are present in oligo, di or um, in most of the cases they are present in polysaccharides like in case of poultry birds uh, if we are feeding grain then starch is the major component of the diet in the form of carbohydrate so that's why monosaccharides they are present in a diet but very little in majority of the feeds we are offering to the animal uh, monosaccharides they absorb primarily in the duodenum and jejunum but major uh, amount of carbohydrates or monosaccharide units they get absorbed from the jejunum when we talk about di and polysaccharides uh, they are relatively large molecule and they must be hydrolyzed prior to absorption as we have discussed uh, in the digestion section uh, they are all get hydrolyzed into monosaccharides so uh, depending upon the type of enzymes and the site uh, the, these uh, di and polysaccharides they are converted into their monosaccharide units. So only monosaccharides can be absorbed and there is a little absorption in the stomach and large intestine. So majority of the nutrient, uh, particularly if we talk about carbohydrates, they get absorbed from the small intestine and jejunum part of the small intestine. So with functional cecum and colon, uh, only protein and amino acids uh, they are in the colon they get absorbed but the amount is uh, you can say quite low as compared to the ruminant animals absorption process in poultry in the small intestine small intestine has three parts duodenum jejunum and ileum and it is the main absorption site in poultry birds like other monogastic species so uh, this small intestine is folded into manifold that basically increases its uh, surface area and it has uh, finger-like projections which are known as villi. Each villus contain arteriole, venol that drain into the hepatic portal system and there is also a provision of lacteals that uh, drains into the thoracic lymphatic duct. So lacteals are the drainage tube of the lymphatic system. Though in case of poultry bird, lymphatic system is not well developed and uh, majority of the nutrients, uh, they follow uh, their absorption through this hepatic portal system. Uh, so these uh, villi, uh, they have uh, small hair-like projections. So the luminal site of 
Each will is covered with the projections or hair like structures they are known as microvilli or brush border. So this basically increases the surface area of the small intestine that facilitate the absorption. Uh, this is uh, a photograph from the www.news.medical.net duly acknowledge uh, their photograph. Uh, here you can see on the left side of the screen that the GIT tract and then the small intestine and then uh, the microscopic uh, part of the small intestine which is shown in the form of many folds that indicate the villi and then each villi that is supplied with this lacteal, arteriole and venole and if you look at the microscopic structure of this uh, epithelial cell with microvilli you can see on the top uh, site of this structure these are hair like structures which are known as a microvilli so if we unfold a 10 feet of a small intestine that become equal to almost a quarter of football ground so you can say that 10 foot area is how large that area is uh, that actually uh, helpful in in the absorption of the nutrient uh, well, uh, this picture is uh, taken from this Shutterstock. I uh, duly acknowledge their contribution. Uh, this picture is just to show you uh, a very detailed uh, diagram uh, about the supply of this blood vessels and lymph vessels in each villi and also to show the crypts and crypt depth that play a key role in nutrient absorption. Absorption of nutrient across the intestine so uh, it started from esophagus and end up at large intestine so from here you can uh, easily uh, assess the amount of uh, amount and type of nutrients not the amount rather the types of nutrients ab absorbed through different portion of the git tract if you look at the stomach there is only water and some uh, minerals elements they get absorbed and from the duodenum again uh, minerals and some vitamin they get absorbed but if you look at the jejunum that area is responsible for the absorption of almost all type of nutrients particularly the primary nutrients like carbohydrate fat and protein so here you can see uh, lipids monosaccharides amino acids and small peptides they get absorbed uh, from the jejunum and from the ileum again some vitamins and minerals and from the large intestine uh, there is the absorption of water uh, and some mineral and vitamin components and at the last part of the large intestine the short chain fatty acids they get absorbed the upper or proximal section of the small intestine which is known as the duodenum and jejunum has the greatest capacity to absorb monosaccharides the lower or distal small intestine which is known as lower ileum it absorbs less and the stomach and large intestine absorb very little so if any sugar is present in the diet the selective absorption of monosaccharides occur from the git tract of the rat galactose and glucose are absorbed very efficiently but mannose uh, which differ from glucose only in the configuration of hydroxyl group of carbon 2 is absorbed at only 20 percent of the efficiency of glucose roots of nutrient absorption the first one is a portal blood which is also known as hepatic portal blood uh, it drains an uh, intestinal area and carries nutrient to the liver the second one is the lymphatic system it bypasses the liver and it empties into the bloodstream through thoracic duct it also serves stomach and the small intestine though this is not a very much functional in case of poultry birds and uh, the third one uh, which is basically the systemic blood that uh, serves the entire body so these uh, three uh, systems they are helpful for carrying the nutrient in the body when we talk about the blood or vascular system it uh, carry water salt glycerol amino acid short chain fatty acid monosaccharides and certain vitamins it has uh, into the capillary system of the intestine that drain into the venous system and to the portal vein of the liver 
so in this vascular system uh, from liver uh, the nutrient uh, they travel through the hepatic vein which enter the main systemic vein uh, which is known as the vena cava so when we compare uh, the regular uh, blood circulation in the body there is some exception in case of git from heart the blood through rt it carried to the small intestine and from the capillaries of the small intestine through portal vein it carried to the capillaries of the liver and then uh, from hepatic uh, vein it carried to the heart so this is a little exception uh, in case of uh, this digestive system or small intestine when we talk about the lymphatic system cholesterol water long chain fatty acid and some protein they are carried through this uh, lacteals or lymph uh, this lymph empty into the venous system interior to the heart uh, via the thoracic duct absorption and release of water soluble nutrients number of water soluble nutrients are there but here i uh, will discuss only the carbohydrates they are digested and converted into monosaccharides in the small intestine Uh, these monosaccharides are then absorbed uh, into the blood uh, the rate of absorption of monosaccharides uh, differ and uh, regardless of the species the glucose and galactose they are absorbed at a highest rate and arabinose at the lowest rate when six monosaccharide uh, they were compared so just a brief summary what we have discussed until now in the small intestine carbohydrates they are converted into monosaccharides and then uh, these monosaccharides they are then carried uh, through the portal vein after absorption the conversion of some monosaccharides to glucose occur within the intestinal mucosal cell conversion of fructose to glucose remain relatively constant over a wide range of fructose concentration but the rate of movement of fructose into the cell is roughly proportional to the luminal concentration so sugars apparently share a common pathway of transport across the intestinal mucosal cell therefore competitive inhibition between glucose and galactose as well as between glucose and several derivatives of glucose is not a surprise so after uh, absorption into the portal vein they are carried to the liver so liver is responsible for multiple function uh, it distributed uh, glucose or monosaccharide uh, to the tissue through circulation uh, usually glucose is transported to cells uh, which are require which are requiring energy Uh, insulin uh, is a factor that influences uh, the rate of absorption and uh, in the liver glucose formation also uh, occurred uh, from fructose galactose and excess glycogen likewise there is also a formation of glycogen from excess glucose so here is the summary of liver role glucose formation from fructose galactose and excess glycogen and then glycogen formation from excess glucose so this is what that happened with the carbohydrates or uh, the end product of carbohydrate which reaches liver absorption of carbohydrates just briefly uh, the aldoses like glucose they are actively transported across the cell after attachment to the specific carrier and carried by the portal blood system to the liver the mechanism for the absorption of ketosis is still unclear whereas uh, for the fructose there is facilitated diffusion or facilitated transport system just uh, mentioned previously ki at an equal concentration galactose glucose fructose mannose xylose and arabinose are absorbed in decreasing order of magnitude mechanism of absorption of glucose there are two main mechanism of absorption one is active transport and other is facilitated diffusion both of these two mechanisms are in action in case of glucose absorption the active transport is in action when glucose transport occur 
into the villous epithelial. In this case, glucose concentration in cell is greater than in small intestine, and this uh, transport uh, is energy dependent. Energy in the form of ATP is required. So, sodium uh, dependent glucose transport system is in action at this stage. The second is facilitated diffusion. Uh, this mechanism is in action for glucose transport across the basolateral surface of the cell into the blood. In this case, glucose concentration in blood is less than the cell. So, the movement uh, from higher to lower concentration uh, occurs. So from this picture, uh, you can get a clear cut idea here. You can see the monosaccharide in the intestinal lumen, then uh, they are passed into the intestinal epithelium uh, with the help of sodium dependent glucose transporter. In the cell, the concentration of uh, glucose is higher as compared to the capillaries or blood. Then from higher to lower, uh, there is a facilitated diffusion. So this facilitated diffusion uh, occur uh, when glucose moved from intestinal epithelial cell into the capillaries from where it is carried into the liver. So active transfer for glucose and galactose uh, is present and uh, the number of known glucose transporter has extended to six sodium dependent glucose transporter SGLT1 to SGLT6 and there are 13 facilitative sugar transporter GLUT1 GLUT1 to GLUT12 and hydrogen coupled myoinositol So this is another diagrammatic uh, presentation of this uh, monosaccharides absorption from brush powder membrane into blood. Uh, from the intestinal lumen, uh, we have three monosaccharides, glucose, fructose and galactose, where the glucose and galactose, they utilizes the same uh, transporter, SGLT1, and both uh, require energy for their uh, transportation across the brush powder membrane to enter into the enterocyte. Whereas uh, fructose uh, only uh, utilizes facilitative sugar transporter 5 and do not require energy. Uh, so they enter into the enterocytes. Uh, in the enterocytes, uh, the concentration of monosaccharide is higher. So glucose, galactose and fructose, they all pass on to the portal blood and they pass through the basolateral membrane and enter into the blood uh, through this. Uh, facilitative sugar transporter 2. So at the basolateral membrane uh, this uh, ATP or which is uh, required uh, in the transportation of uh, this glucose and galactose uh, at brush border membrane uh, that is uh, converted into ADP then two potassium molecules they enter from blood into the enterocytes whereas the three sodium molecules they leave uh, the enterocyte and enter into the blood circulation and this cycle continues this is known as sodium potassium ATP pump that generate energy for the transportation of monosaccharides particularly glucose and galactose rate of absorption of sugars the rates of absorption of various sugars differ uh, at an equal concentration galactose galactose fructose mannose xylose and arabinose are absorbed in decreasing order of magnitude so if you look at uh, the last uh, galactose rate of absorption is higher than the glucose whereas glucose absorbed at a higher rate than the fructose and fructose from mannose and mannose from xylose and xylose from arabinose so this is all about uh, carbohydrate digestion and absorption thank you